All right, in a previous video, we derived a formula for the surface area of a parametrized surface. And then we did a simple example of finding the surface area of a sphere. So I want to do a couple more examples in this video, but before we do that, let's go ahead and recall the outcome of that previous result. So let's suppose that S is smoothly by parametrized by the function R, which we'll say has parameters U and V, and U and V range over this subset D of the plane, and I should say that um, R is one-to-one -one on D. It doesn't actually have to be exactly one-to-one. -one. It has to be one-to-one -one on all but a set of measure zero or on the boundary or something like that. So then the surface area of S is given by the following formula. So it's the double integral over D of the magnitude of the cross product of the partial of R with respect to U and the partial of R with respect to V. Okay, so what we want to do here is find the surface area of this sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4, so that's a sphere of radius 2, but we don't want the whole sphere, we just want the part of the sphere that's above this cone, z equals square root of x squared plus y squared. So again, this is like far into a multivariable course, so hopefully we know that that's a cone, but just to be sure, notice if we cover up the y, we get z equals square root of x squared, which is like z equals absolute value of x, then this looks like z equals absolute value of y, so that shows you that it should open kind of in a straight manner, and then it's going to open like a circle because if we set z equal to a constant, we essentially get the um, equation for a circle in x and y. Okay, so I've drawn my picture, so my cone is in orange, my sphere is in purple, and then furthermore, uh, the part that we're interested in, I've put in yellow up here. So really we want just the bit of ice cream that is above the cone, but we want the surface area of that. So the surface area of the ice cream that is exposed to the air. Now this is a super important question because the surface area of the ice cream that's exposed to the air is going to determine how fast that ice cream melts. So hopefully uh, you guys understand how important this type of question is. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and see if we can parametrize this surface, which is our first goal. And we'll do this by taking inspiration from polar, or sorry, from spherical coordinates. So let's recall spherical coordinates look like this. They look like x equals rho uh, cosine theta sine phi, um, y equals rho uh, sine theta sine phi, and then uh, z equals rho uh, cosine phi. Okay, now, um, but we don't need all of the values of rho. Notice uh, these spherical coordinates will parametrize the entire three space, but we don't need the whole three space. We need to lie only on the sphere of radius two, which means we can just set rho equal to two all the time. So that's all that we need. And then furthermore, we've got to figure out what we need to do with the theta and phi. So it's pretty clear that theta is going to run from 0 to 2 pi because our ice cream goes all the way around the, the cone in this direction. Remember, theta is the angle, like our polar angle, which is happening in the xy plane. Now, phi is the angle from the positive z-axis z axis down, so we will need to figure out what our value of phi is, and uh, we can do that uh, via the following calculation, um, which involves finding the equation of this in spherical coordinates. So let's go ahead and plug these guys into that equation and see what we get. So we'll get uh, rho cosine phi equals the square root of, so let's see what we have. We have rho squared cos squared theta sine squared phi plus rho squared uh, sine squared theta sine squared uh, phi. Great, so we've got something like that. But now notice that each of these terms has a rho squared and a uh, sine squared phi in it. And then one of them has a cosine squared and one of them has a sine squared. So that means they're going to add up to uh, rho squared um, sine squared phi. 
just think about factoring that yellow stuff out, and then we're left with cosine squared plus sine squared, which is one. But now we can go ahead and take the square root of this, and that's going to give us, this is equal to rho sine phi. Okay? But notice the rows are going to cancel, and that's going to give us uh, cosine phi equals sine phi. Remember, the only thing that uh, values that phi can take are between 0 and pi. And sine is always positive in that case, which is why we didn't need an absolute value here. But it also ensures that we only have one solution, and that's going to be phi equals pi over 4. So what that tells us is that the equation of this cone right here in polar terms is really phi equals pi over 4, which tells us that our phi value is going between 0 and pi over 4. Okay, great. So um, I'm going to go ahead and clean up this part of the board, and then uh, we can write our parametrization. So like I said, I'm going to set 2 equal to rho in all of these parts, and then I'm going to put it into a vector equation kind of like this over here. Okay, I'll do that. So in the previous board, we argued that our r theta phi, in other words, the parametrization for this bit of ice cream is given by 2 cosine theta sine phi, 2 sine theta sine phi, 2 cosine phi. And then theta phi, that ordered pair, um, is in the cross of these two intervals, 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi over 4. Okay, so I'm going to draw this picture down here. That What that is telling us is that over here in the theta phi plane, if we go just here between 0 and 2 pi and 0 and pi over 4 and take this rectangle, this parameterization is mapping this rectangle into our ice cream part of our ice cream cone. Okay, good. So now the next thing that we need to do is calculate the partials of uh, R with respect to theta and phi. So let's see what we get for that. So R with respect to theta is going to be minus 2 uh, sine theta sine phi and then 2 cosine theta sine phi and then zero because the derivative of cosine phi with respect to theta is zero and then r phi so that partial derivative is going to be given by uh, two cosine theta cosine phi and then two sine theta cosine phi and then finally minus two sine phi great now the next thing that we need to do is take the cross product of those given that that is what's going to give us the area of the surface. So let's go ahead and get to that. So taking the cross product of those, so we need the I component, the J component, the K component. And here we'll have this is minus 2 sine theta sine phi right here, and then 2 cosine theta cosine phi right here, and then down here we'll have 2 cosine theta sine phi, and then 2 sine theta cosine phi, and then finally 0 here and minus 2 sine phi here. Okay, so now let's see what we get for our first component, which is what we get from crossing out this first column and this first row, we will have 2 cosine theta sine phi times that, so that's going to be minus 4 cosine theta sine squared phi. Then notice we've got 0 for the other part. Now next we need to cross out this first row and then this second column to give us this entry. So notice here we're going to have 4 uh, sine theta sine squared phi, but notice here um, we'll have it negative because that's built into the cross product formula. So this will be negative 4 um, sine theta sine squared phi. That's what we get for that. 
And then finally, for our last component, which is given by this last column and then this first row, that is going to be four sine squared theta, sine phi, cosine phi, and then four cosine squared theta, sine theta, sine phi. So notice we've got a sine squared and a cosine squared theta attached to each of those. So that's going to give us minus four uh, sine phi, cosine phi. So I'll let you guys check those details that that's what you get. Okay. Good. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board, bring this up, and then we're almost uh, done with the calculation. So on the last board, we got our cross product calculated. And now we're ready to take the magnitude and then uh, take the integral. So using this formula like as our guideline. So uh, notice here we have our integral from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi over 4. The magnitude of this guy, which was our cross product, this was r theta cross r phi. And then we have d phi d theta. The phi integral is on the inside. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring that down and do some of the calculation. So this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi. And then the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of, so this is going to be the square root of this thing squared. So that's going to give us 16 cosine squared um, theta sine to the fourth phi. Okay, and then plus 16 sine squared uh, theta sine to the fourth phi and then finally plus 16 uh, sine squared phi cosine squared phi and then again in there we have d phi d theta Great. So now let's look at these first two terms. Notice that our 16 sine to the fourth is the same in each of those. And then we've got a cosine squared in the first one and a sine squared in the second one. So we can think about factoring the yellow underlying stuff out. And then we'll have cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. That's going to allow us to simplify this. So we'll have the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi over 4, and then the square root of, so that's going to give us 16 sine to the fourth phi. Great. And then plus 16 sine squared phi cosine squared phi. And now this is d phi d theta. And now we can do the same thing again. So notice we can split this uh, sine to the fourth into a sine squared phi sine squared phi and now we've got a common term in each of those we have a 16 sine squared phi in each one and then we have a sine squared and a cosine squared so we can think about factoring the 16 sine squared out and then we have got sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 and so that gives us the integral from 0 to 2 pi the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the square root of 16 sine squared phi. And then we have d phi d theta. Okay, now before we move on, notice we can take the square root of each of those terms, and that's going to give us 4 sine phi. And you might say, well, why isn't the absolute value of sine? Well, when phi is between 0 and pi over 4, sine is always positive, so we don't need the absolute value there. Okay, so I'll bring that up, and then we're almost done. Okay, on the previous board, we got it worked down to the following. So we have the area of the surface is the integral from 0 to 2 pi and then the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 4 times sine phi d phi d theta. So notice we can write that as the product of two single integrals. So 0 to 2 pi d theta and then 0 to pi over 4 um, of sine phi d phi and then we can go ahead and just take the 4 out of this. So these two bits right here are just going to give us 8 pi and then we can just use the fundamental theorem of calculus on this. So this is going to be cosine of phi um, and it will be negative and then we're evaluating that from 0 to pi over 4. Now what I like to do, I'm going to take this minus sign and turn it to a plus sign if I can change the order of evaluation. So notice that's going to give me 8 times pi, then we have cosine of 0, which is 1, minus cosine of pi over 4, which is 1 over root 2.
But notice we can simplify that a little bit. That's going to be 8 pi. And then we have 1 is root 2 over root 2. So that's going to be root 2 minus 1 over root 2. And I think maybe that's a good place to stop.